Welcome to this week's sermon from Spark. We are a community who believes we are deeply loved by God and seek to welcome, support, love, and serve every person we meet. We hope this message has something for you today. All right, so everybody got their dollar. Put it in your pocket so you don't lose it. Today, we're gonna read a story from the book of Matthew chapter 20. And it goes like this. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After he agreed with the workers to pay them a denarion, which is a a piece of money, it's like kind of like a $20 bill, Um, and the denarion would have been a whole day's worth of money. So when you work a whole day, you would get a denarion, okay? So he agreed with the workers to pay them a denarion, and he sent them into his vineyard. So then he went out at nine in the morning and saw others standing around the marketplace doing nothing. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I'll pay you whatever is right. And they went. Again, around noon and then at three in the afternoon, the landowner did the same thing. Around five o'clock in the afternoon, the landowner went and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you just standing around here doing nothing all day long? Because nobody has hired us, they replied. And he responded, you also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call all of the workers and give them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and moving on finally to the first. When those who were hired at five in the afternoon came, each one received a denarian. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more but each of them also received a denarian. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. These who were hired last worked one hour and they received the same pay as we did, even though we had to work the whole day in the hot sun. But the landowner replied to one of them, friend, I did you no wrong. Didn't I agree to pay you a denarian? Take what belongs to you and go. I want to give to this one who was hired last the same as I gave to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you resentful because I'm generous? So those who are last will be first and those who are first will be last. So when you hear that story, what does it make you feel? Weird. What, what do you feel like when you hear that story? Let's recap the story, all right? So there's a landowner, and he has a vineyard. And a vineyard is where we grow what kind of fruit? Grapes, right? So he has a, a land where they grow grapes, and he needs people to harvest the grapes, to pluck the grapes off the vines. And so he goes into town to the marketplace, and he finds people standing there who need work. And he says, okay, come work with me, and I'll pay you a denarian, a day's wage, to do this work. So those people come and they start working. Well, then the landowner goes back and forth between the market and his field several times throughout the day and continues to collect people to come and to work for him. And he tells the second groups of people, all the other folks, that he'll pay them what is right. So there's the first group gets told how much they're gonna get paid and the second, third, fourth, fifth groups all get told that they'll get paid what is right. So the end of the day comes and the owner says to the manager, okay, it's time to go pay everybody for their day's work. And they line everybody up and they start with the people that worked one hour and go down the line to the people that worked like all eight hours of the day. And they all get paid the exact same amount. Now the person who's at the very end of the line who got hired last gets their full day's pay. And what does the person on the other end of the line think? You're gonna get more, right? Because, oh my gosh, if that person who only worked one hour gets a whole day's wage, I worked eight hours today. I'm gonna get so much more money. I'm so excited about that. So they're kind of like in their brain, maybe thinking about how they're gonna spend their extra cash. Like I'm gonna get some sweet new shoes or I'm gonna go to Walmart and buy my favorite bag of chips. I'm like thinking ahead about, oh man, I'm so excited that I'm gonna get more money than I even thought possible. But then the manager comes to them and hands them exactly what they were told they would get at the end of the day. And they get upset. Would you have been upset? No? Maybe a little bit. They get upset that they get paid the same 
as somebody who only worked one hour. And they complain about it to the landowner and then there's a conversation. So a lot of times when we read the story, because the story is told kind of from the perspective of that first person that got hired early in the morning and we hear about their grumbling, we think to ourselves like, well, that's not fair. How many of you thought that when you heard the story? Like, how oh, that's not fair, that that person would get paid so little compared to the person that worked so little, <laughs> right? It's upsetting to us. How many of you, when I was handing out the dollar bills to the players of our game, were like, he even got one, he didn't do anything? I know some of you in the front row said that, right? Like, what? Why is he getting a dollar? He just hung out in the back. But he was chosen, right? So when we read these stories, when we think about it, a lot of times we place ourselves in the place of the person that we deserve it. We think of ourselves as worthy of receiving based on how much we work. And that's kind of how our economy works, right? You work one hour, you get paid for one hour's worth of wage. If you work 40 hours, you get paid for 40 hours worth of wage, right? There's not kind of this well, we'll just kind of make it up and see how it goes by business owners. That's not really how they work their businesses. So when we read this story, a lot of times we read it and we are left like frustrated. Like, why would they do this? Outraged for the person that worked all day long in the hot sun. They deserve more than that, right? But what if we read the story and thought of the story from the perspective of the person who only worked one hour, right? What if you were late getting to the marketplace that morning because one of your kids was sick and you needed to find somebody to watch your kids so that you could get to work that day, and so you get to the marketplace just after everybody has left and gone for their day's work, and so you're sitting there frustrated and thinking, I'm not gonna get any money today. I'm not gonna get paid today. I'm not gonna be able to afford dinner tonight. I'm not even gonna be able to afford the childcare that I just paid for so that I could come and hopefully get some work today, right? And you're sitting there and you're hoping that somebody will come along some point later in the day and you'll at least get a little bit of work so that then you'd at least make a little bit of something. And then along comes a landowner and offers you the opportunity to come and pick grapes in his vineyard. And you're like, yes, at least today I will make a little bit. I was hoping for a whole day's wage, but at least I'll get a little bit. And so you go and you work your hour in the field and then it comes time for the end of the work day and you line up to get the pay with everybody else and you are first in line, which feels weird because you just got there and somebody hands you a whole day's worth of money. Not $10 for your one hour that you worked, but your whole $80 for a whole day. How would you feel? Good, awesome, appreciative, grateful, blessed, thankful, surprised, grateful. Yeah, you would be completely like surprised and awe. Aven, how'd you feel when I handed you a dollar? Amazed, because <laughs> you're like, I didn't do anything, right? I didn't earn this, but it's a gift that's been given to me. And when we hear this story from that perspective, it changes some things, right? If we're the person who is receiving, not because we have earned it or deserve it, but because it's a gift to us, we enter a different posture. We're humbled. We're grateful. We're not angry. We don't feel like we deserve something more. Last week, we talked about how parables, these stories that we're reading in this new sermon series, are Jesus' way of taking ordinary things, ordinary circumstances, and teaching us something about the kingdom of heaven, about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is how God intended the world to look. So when God created everything in the book of Genesis, God had an intention for the world. And then humans, we wanted to be like God. We wanted to have um, more knowledge. And so sin entered the world and that kind of distorted the way that God originally intended the world to look. And our goal is that we would be able to one day experience the restoration of the world back to the way God originally intended. So if you think about it, like you have 
um, something that's made of ceramic and you crack it and it all falls to pieces and then you get out your super glue and you're trying really hard to glue it back together so that your mom doesn't notice that there's like 500 cracks in the thing that you broke. That's kind of like what we are trying to do, but God is actually saying, let's take all those pieces and make something completely new, kind of like our mosaic cross that we use every Sunday, right? So God's trying to restore all the things that are broken and make something new out of them, and that's called the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus started that work when Jesus came down to be with us and showed us what, it, what the kingdom of heaven could look like, and we're also looking forward to the day that one day it will be restored. So we're kind of in the, living in this in-between place, right? You and I, we can see glimpses of the kingdom of heaven. It's like looking through, if you've ever seen one of those doors that has a little peephole, if you've ever seen, looked through one, you can see like just this little bit into the room, but you can't see the whole room. Or it's like if you're putting a puzzle together, but you only have like 10 pieces, you don't have the whole picture to really see where you're going. We get these glimpses of the kingdom of heaven, and maybe you can think of some moments in your life where you experienced the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Maybe when you received grace and you didn't feel like you deserved it, or you experienced a moment of pure joy, or when you were able to be generous and saw the way that that changed someone else's life. All of those are examples of the kingdom of heaven. And so these parables are Jesus kind of showing us little glimpses, little pictures of what the kingdom of heaven looks like, what we would like this world to look like. And so as we read this story, the very first past the sentence, the very first verse says, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers. What about the kingdom of heaven do you think Jesus is trying to teach us in this story? What is Jesus trying to show us about the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. <laughs> you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Okay. Generosity. Yeah. Yeah. If you come late, it's not too late to receive the word. Okay, if you do what you know is right, you never know what you might receive in return. Okay, so the landowner he was saying is kind of like God and the landowner is looking for people to work and it's kind of like God looking for disciples to work in the world. Any other ways you think Jesus is... Doesn't matter what time you come, as long as you come. Awesome. Any others? It's never too late. It's never too late. Yeah. See, and isn't it beautiful that this one story could teach us and each of us kind of pick up a little something different about the kingdom of heaven. But the general theme I'm hearing through your responses and where I found the kingdom of heaven in this is in that generosity and in the fact that it does not matter when you come, as long as you come. And that's good news for us, friends, but it's hard news for us, too. For those of us, especially, who consider ourselves Christians, who think like, oh, I've been sitting in church for five years, Pastor Madeline. I know what's going on. I deserve all the blessings. And then you see someone come in who was messing up last week, was cursing out their staff members, and was getting all kinds of special circumstances and stuff, and then they come in and they get a dollar when they play the game in here. And you think, well, that's not fair. I was doing all the right things all the time. And the important message is it's not what we put in, it's what God makes available to us. It's not about checking off the list. It's not about earning all the money. It's not about earning all the spiritual treasures. It's really about God and our relationship with God. Because it doesn't matter if you've been here for 20 years or if you've been here for one, the value that God finds in you is the same. Each person is seen as beloved and dear to God. And if you show up, that's what matters. 
And that's so counterintuitive to our understanding of value and of worth and what is important. Because we place value and worth on what we put out into the world, what we do. And God says, yeah, what you do is nice. I'm not gonna discredit that, but what I really care about is who you are and that you are here. That's what matters to me. And so this morning, if you're sitting here and you're thinking like that you have to somehow be perfect in order to receive God's love, forgiveness, grace, whatever it is that you need in your life, courage, strength, et cetera, that you just have to like put your quarter into the vending machine to get something back, that you just have to put five hours of community service in before you get something in return. That's not how God operates. God gives freely because that's what God intended for the world from the very beginning was that you and I would be in relationship with God. That we would be loved, that we would be forgiven, that we would experience grace, that we would experience all kinds of gifts that we did nothing to earn. Simply because God delights in being with us. And I hope that you can learn from that relationship in your other relationships with other people that it's not about what you get from them, but it's about how you can be together. It's not about whether or not that you owe them because they brought you dinner one night when you were sick, it's about I want to be with you and spend time growing together with you. That's what God wants for us, is to be with us. So my prayer today is that we would kind of let go of our ideas of who earns and who deserves and who is in the hierarchy and who's better than everybody else and to look around and to see each person as valuable and lovely and worthy the way that God sees them and to see yourself that way too, which is maybe the hardest thing of all. Say, I am worthy. I'm worthy. Of, love. of love. Say, I am worthy, I am worthy. Of, God's love. of God's love. Amen. Let's pray. God, we're grateful that you have an economy that doesn't look like ours, that you do business in a way that doesn't make sense to us, that you don't put a different price on each of us, that you don't require different amounts from us in the forms of a certain number of prayers prayed or acts of service done or hours spent in worship, God, but that you see each of us and all of us as of equal worth. God, I pray this morning that we would let go of the things that we think make us unworthy of you. Whether it's a past mistake, whether it's something we said this morning, whether it's something that will happen in the future, God, I pray that we would allow those things to roll off our backs, to wash away from us so that we can see ourselves the way that you see us. As a human being, worthy of love, all of our flaws included, exactly as we are. And then God, I pray that that love that you have for us would transform us to be people who love others the same way, who give without expecting anything in return, who share compassion even when someone doesn't deserve it. Help us to be more like you, Jesus. We ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about our ministry, follow the link in the description below. Peace be with you. And